In our recent history, there has been a controversial debate going around about whether prostitution should be legalized and or decriminalized. So often, we hear some reasons as to why it should be, but how often do we hear counter-arguments against this notion? My name is Keely Briner, and today I'm going to give you some reasons as to why prostitution should not be legalized or decriminalized in the United States or anywhere else hoping to solve the controversial issues surrounding sex work and prostitution. Firstly, I want to start out by giving a trigger warning, as I will be discussing sexual exploitation of both sex workers and children. This is a very touchy subject, so if this in any way offends or triggers you, then please do not continue watching further. I also want to say that when I say women in reference to female prostitutes, that is not to say that men do not work as prostitutes as well, and I am generally referencing any person who is a prostitute. The same goes for John Doe's being any person who participates in the purchase of sex workers. Secondly, I am going to be talking about prostitution and sex trafficking today, not other sexual services such as escorting or virtual sex work, as these are already legal in the United States though the broader topic of sex work and cultural shifts may tie these subjects into play today. Legalization of prostitution is bringing sex workers into legal shops, legal brothels, and legal sex venues that often operate with few restraints. The arguments we often hear revolve around an effort to empower or dignify prostitutes Yet, legalization would not dignify prostitutes, but the sex industry itself. We don't often think about how legalization does not only legalize the prostitute, but also the buyers and those who traffic them. Pimps and traffickers are then able to label themselves entrepreneurs or businessmen instead of abusers and traffickers. Though, it is important to be vocal about the importance of decriminalizing sex workers themselves, we should still fight against decriminalizing both buyers of prostitution, often labeled John Doe's, and sex traffickers as well. What they do is abusive, criminal, and harmful and should still receive punishment instead of the gift of making their exploitive measures legal. Many fail to consider that legalization of prostitution is one of the root causes of international sex trafficking. Many women are trafficked from other countries where prostitution is more profitable or less punishable. A study from the Budapest Group in 1999 reported that 80% of women in brothels in the Netherlands were trafficked from other countries. Therefore, it does not stop sex trafficking, it only enables and expands it. Child trafficking is the illegal sexual trafficking of children. Yet, in countries where prostitution is legalized, once this child victim turns 18 or of regional legal age, they are no longer a victim of child trafficking, but are now an empowered sex worker exercising their right to sell their own body. Their traffickers also becoming no longer abusive groomers, but businessmen or entrepreneurs. A lot of child trafficking victims never find their way out of the hands of their own abusers and often do it for a very, very long time, if not for the rest of their lives. Legalizing prostitution will make it that much easier for child victims to never find resources for themselves. They often never see their families again and are victims of violence and murder. We should not enable this and definitely not give traffickers and groomers any legal leeway once their victim turns of legal age. In two studies, which 186 victims of commercial sexual exploitation were interviewed, women consistently indicated that legalization provides very little, if no, protection for sex workers, but it does provide protection for the customers, or John Doe's, that purchase these women. Lots of these women are still sexually abused and even physically abused. Most of these women also explained that they still fear for their lives on a daily basis, living in an environment of constant fear. Yet, John Doe's receive legal protection as participants in the purchase of females for sex. Legalization also further cuts resources short for these sex workers, confining them to smaller, tighter controlled spaces where they have less opportunities to interact and reach out to other sex workers, as well as receiving less intervention from law enforcement 
or legal officials. As for the betterment of sex workers' health, this is a complete fallacy. In a legalized system, there are mandates for women to be tested for STDs or HIV AIDS, yet there is not mandated testing for the male buyers themselves. Women are still subject to risk of infection and are not fully protected from STDs or HIV AIDS. Male buyers can and do originally transmit diseases to these women they purchase. Street prostitution would still very much exist within a country with legal prostitution, as many prostitutes do not want to be documented as such, tested for diseases, or to lose their anonymity. The purchase of these women from John Doe's will also, obviously, continue as well. Condom enforcements are also legally considered, though not well enforced. Many commercialized sex workers claim that male customers will often argue against using a condom, or will even offer extra money to have intercourse without one. The friendly free market will also make sure to weed out businesses who are less likely to perform without the use of condoms, as market competition is always a factor within any legal industry. Oftentimes, we hear that women are entitled to the choices they make with their own bodies, which is true and reasonable, yet, we fail to consider the dark truth that most prostitutes did not choose to go into prostitution. Janice G. Raymond states, most women in prostitution did not make a rational choice to enter prostitution from among a range of other options. They did not sit down one day and decide that they wanted to be prostitutes. They did not have other real options such as medicine, law, nursing, or politics. Instead, their options were more in the realm of how to feed themselves and or their children. Such choices are better termed survival strategies. J. Raymond's study groups found that many described prostitution as a last choice or an involuntary way of making ends meet. One study found that 67% of law enforcement officials expressed the opinion that women did not enter prostitution voluntarily and 72% of social service providers shared this same opinion. Legalization will also make it much harder to prosecute pimps and traffickers. In a region that has legalized prostitution, the lines between forced and voluntary work become blurred, and women are left with the burden to provide proof that they are, were truly forced into this prostitution. Once again, more protection for only the traffickers themselves. It is also worth mentioning that women in prostitution do not generally wish for legalization. A five-country study on sex trafficking concluded that most trafficked women interviewed in the Philippines, Venezuela, and the United States strongly stated they don't believe it should be legalized or considered legitimate work. One woman said, no way, it's not a profession, it is humiliating and violence from the men's side. Not one woman we interviewed wanted her children, family, or friends to have to earn money by entering the sex industry. Another woman stated, prostitution stripped me of my life, my health, everything. In legal countries, the stigma of being a prostitute does not simply go away. It only follows sex workers in a way it didn't before stripping them of their anonymity and documenting their profession, though the stigma of purchasing a prostitute does in fact decrease. In countries with legalization, it is more normal for men to frequent sex clubs and venues. A Melbourne brothel owner states that the client base was well-educated, professional men who visited during the day and then go home to their families. When legal barriers disappear, so too do the social and ethical barriers to treating women as sexual merchandise. Is the commodification and commercialization of women or any human bodies ethical? Often, it is those that understand the plight of the exploited worker that advocates for the introduction of prostitution into the market. But why is this? To treat other human beings as products to buy and use is obviously unethical, perhaps not to the free market but to our own social humanity. Here are some questions to reflect on. Is sex work real work? Is sex work something you would want your children or loved ones to enter into as a formal career? Is buying human beings for sexual use ethical? 
Should we give John Doe's and sex traffickers more legal loopholes to avoid prosecution? And finally, is sex work detrimental to your sexual, physical, or mental health? A 1998 international labor organization stated that prostitution is one of the most alienated forms of labor. The surveys show that women worked with a heavy heart, felt forced, or were conscience-stricken and had negative self-identities. A significant portion claimed they wanted to leave sex work if they could. If prostitution is real work, why do so many former workers claim to have survived it? Should real work come at the risk of your health, safety, or even your life? Why do so many sex workers come out of the work with conditions such as PTSD or complex trauma? State-sponsored prostitution sanitized the reality of prostitution. Suddenly, dirty money becomes clean. Illegal acts become legal. Overnight, pimps are transformed into legitimate businessmen and ordinary entrepreneurs, and men who would not formally consider buying a woman in prostitution think, well, if it's legal, if it's decriminalized, now it must be okay. Some alternative routes to legalizing prostitution is to penalize demand. Legislators often believe that legalization is the only option, but without male demand, there would be no female supply. Sweden is a great example of one alternative solution, which is to punish those who purchase prostitutes instead of the prostitutes themselves. Sweden recognized prostitution as a form of male violence against women and children. In 1997, Sweden's Violence Against Women Bill prohibits the purchase of sexual services. This was part of a wider Violence Against Women Bill that allocates the resources to support the development for alternatives for women in prostitution. Studies conducted in 2000 and 2001 showed strong support for the bill, approximately 80% of Sweden's population in support of the law. Street prostitution has declined since the law passed, the number of prostituted women decreased by 50%. Swedish NGOs that work with women in prostitution also reported an increase in the numbers of women reaching out to them for assistance. It is unfortunate that we hear so much about how to keep women in prostitution, but not how to help women get out. Sweden sets a great example of just one of the alternatives to tackling prostitution and sexual exploitation without introducing it to the market. Though crime rates may statistically drop, leaving people to truly believe it lowers sexual crime, this does not mean these women are not still victims to crimes and abuse that has now been made legal or socially acceptable. Does this mean we should hurt, shame, or jail exploited women and or children? Absolutely not. They should not be punished for their own exploitation. Women are often jailed and later released back to street prostitution, proving this method not only cruel, but counterproductive. Sex worker rights are human rights, and they have the right to safety and resources out of their abuse. It is once again important to have a voice for these women and children. But commodifying their abuse and exploitation doesn't help them, it hurts them. It may benefit John Doe's, pimps, sex traffickers, and child traffickers, and even governments, but legalization only makes it harder for these women to reach out and receive real resources. If we truly care about these women, commodifying sexual exploitation is not an option. I want to end this on the note that I will be linking the article by Janice G. Raymond below. I will also link helplines for those suffering from sexual abuse or trafficking in the description below. Thank you for listening. I really hope I have relayed some important information against legalization and decriminalization of prostitution, and I hope that this perspective makes sense in the way that prostitution should still be recognized as a form of violence and abuse against women. Thank you.